Hey, better editors, welcome back. My name is Chris, and today we are diving into part six of our 10-part series in Adobe Premiere Pro. Today is the day that I think most of you have been waiting for. We are going to see our edit take shape. We're gonna take some clips, we're gonna throw them in the timeline, get them the way we want them, match them up to the music, and when we're done, we are going to see a solid edit. Let's do it. Okay, everybody, so this is where the fun really begins. We're gonna see this edit come to life today because we're gonna drop some clips on top of the foundation we laid with our music track. So to do that, I'm gonna close up my audio bin. I don't need it anymore. And I'm gonna open up our select sequence. Okay, now this opened up in the same timeline window as our current, pro or our current edit. And that's not gonna really do us much good. It would be a lot of bouncing back and forth, very inconvenient. But to fix that, what I can do is click this timeline and drag it down until we see this purple mark down here, this purple line, and let go. And when I do that, now we have two sequences open so we can bounce quickly between the two of them. And since we're also working in a single screen, it's a little small real estate, especially if you're on a laptop trying to do this, um, we need to open up as much space as we can so we can really work. To do that, I'm gonna click on my timeline window, make sure it's selected blue, and I'm gonna hit Shift and the minus key. And what that does is condenses our tracks down so that they're really small, but we can still see what they are. Obviously, we can see their names, we can scrub through them and see what's going on, but we don't have just a bunch of extra wasted space with a track that is too tall. Okay, and then we can open up our window a little more. Now, I'm gonna leave my music track a little big on here so I can still see the waveform. That's gonna help us really edit this piece together. All right, now to get going, I want to just kind of scrub through our footage. I know we want to start with beans, and I really love this bean falling shot. Um, it's close up, it's got some good movement to it, it's just a really cool shot. So I'm gonna select that clip down here and hit F, and that's gonna match frame it into our source monitor, which lets us look at the entire clip on a bigger timeline. It's easier to scrub through it and find a good moment to start. Let's see, what's a good place? I love this little hit right there where those two beans collide. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to back this up just a little bit, mark an endpoint, point, and I'm going to let my out point run wild, meaning I'm not going to make one. I'm going to come into my edit, and since we're only interested in the video, I'm going to turn off my uh, source patch for my audio channel. And I'm also going to turn off these target tracks. No need for them right now. And then I will hit overwrite. And we want to put this right where that beat comes in. Now to me, that felt a little off. Let's move it over just a bit. Now, I think something that would be cool, see these two beans where they collide to each other? I think that's pretty neat. And I think it would be nice if it landed on this clap right there. So if we, to get that to happen, I'm gonna find where these beans hit each other, right there. I'm gonna switch to my slip tool and I'm gonna hover it right on that part of the clip and drag it right about where that hit should happen, right where that clap happens in the music. Let's play it back. I think we were a little off, maybe a hair too soon. So let's just nudge the whole clip this way. And I think we're off the other way. So let's go back. There we go, that feels good. And we come in just a few frames before this beat happens, but that feels good to me, so I'm gonna leave it that way. And let's drag this out. And clearly we're at the end of our clip, noted by this little triangle in the top right corner. I'm gonna change clips right where this next clap happens. And I find it looks most pleasing to the eye whenever you're watching one of these things to actually change clips a frame or two before the beat happens. So notice the beat is right here, but my marker is about one frame ahead of it. So let's go find our next clip. I also wanted to note that we've already used this clip in our uh, select sequence. So I'm just gonna hit Command B on the keyboard to disable that clip. You could also do that by right clicking and hitting enable in your right click menu. Okay, and let's keep looking. So we've got this thing with the arm. I really like that. We've got this one. This is a cool shot, but 
it's a little industrial for me, whereas this one has a more cinematic look to it. It's got this nice lighting right there. It's really dark. Got some good shadows over here in the top left. So let's match frame into that and see what we have. And I kind of like right before that shadow up here comes into frame, I'm going to put my endpoint and then I'm just going to overwrite that into the sequence again. Okay. Now, so what I'm noticing is that our clip is not long enough because I think our next clip is going to need to come in right here where this big beat is. So I'm going to cheat this a little bit and I'm going to move this clip right here. I'm going to nudge it right there and drag over. And we're still a little short, so new game plan. Let's actually start this clip right here on this big beat. Okay. I think that we can make that work. So let's drag this clip back out. And notice we're still short. So to cheat that a little bit, we'll move this over. And this is going to make us lose that bean hitting clap right there that I like so much. But you win some, you lose some. And see, right now, this clip is parked right where this hit happens. And like I mentioned before, I think it's going to look better if we actually start that about a frame ahead of that. So I'm going to select that edit and hit minus one, and that will move the, that edit back one frame. That feels better to me. And now something I'm also looking at now, seeing this arm come into frame, I like how it exits the frame because it fills up more of it at once. I wanna see how this looks if we reverse this clip. So if we right click and hit speed duration and say reverse, how does this look? I like that because the action is almost done when the clip cuts out, but not quite. So it leads us into the next clip that we're going to put right here. So let's jump back into our selects clip, grab this thing and disable it so we know we've used it. And then I'll come here. I don't think we're going to use that shot because I really like this undulating bean shot. It is just super cool. All right. And to bring this one in, I think we're going to just find a good spot right there. Looks about good. I'm going to mark an in point in my sequence, move forward a little bit, and mark an out. Now, you'll notice that there's a highlighted part right here in the timeline. And what we're going to do, we want to make sure that our target is selected. So if it's not blue over here, make sure you click that. And what we're going to do is hit Control or Command C. That's going to copy just this section of the clip. And we can move into our next sequence, jump to this edit right about there, and hit Control or Command V and we have that same clip. I love just how slow motion it is with that heavy guitar hit, uh, it's so nice. Okay, now remember, we want this little beat right here, this instant stop to be really jarring to the viewer. So that means this clip needs to stop right on that beat. So I'll hit add edit and remove that. For good measure, I'll hit save, and now we're gonna go. Let's feel this out. Okay, and I wanna go ahead and try the idea I had by adding a grinder shot right here. Okay, so this is gonna be the good one. So let's grab this clip and throw it up into our source monitor. Again, just select it, hit F, and it'll bounce up in there. And there's two parts here that I really like. There's a little rack focus right there that's really nice, but then we also see the action of the barista pushing in the grinder to turn it on. So let's try this. I think we're gonna try him pushing in the action. So I'm just gonna put an in point right there, come over here. I'll jump to the end of that clip that's in the timeline, put an in point, jump to the next edit in the clip. And I'm doing that by pressing up and down on the keyboard, mark an out point and hit overwrite. I kind of like that. One of the things I really like about this is there's almost a bit of a delay that's attached to it that's kind of like, what's going to happen? Because the grinds don't start falling out of the grinder immediately, and that's kind of nice. All right, so let's jump back into our working sequence, turn that off, and find our close-up shot. Okay, here we go. So we'll do the same thing, pull it into the source monitor. 
And this shot is very similar. There's not too much going on here. There is a little bit of a rack focus right about there and right there. I really like that rack focus. And there's a good chunk of grinds that come into the, uh, I don't know what to call that thing, the espresso catcher, the smasher. Let's call it that. I like smasher. So we'll do that. Okay, so again, I'll come in here, mark an endpoint, drag my head over a little bit and hit an out and see what happens. Okay, and now we're gonna start moving a little faster into the edit. The music picks up, so our imagery should also pick up with that. Let's move this over. I, to get the hand tool, just press the H key, or you can go over here and hit the H tool in the uh, tool palette, but H also is a lot faster to hit. We'll get rid of that clip. Let's see. And I think we just need, we need to get into this shot right here where we're pressing down the espresso, but I want something else in there to really speed up this edit. So I'm gonna grab this clip as well. And there's nothing really going on in this clip. I mean, we're literally just holding the espresso smasher thing, but there's this little camera move that almost looks like a mistake that I think we can use to benefit us. So I'm gonna come here, mark an endpoint, drag, go out a little bit and overwrite. And I like where that's going. But I think we can exaggerate that move more. So I'm gonna select this clip, get on top of it, and I'm gonna go over to my effect controls. And in here, I'm gonna add a keyframe on scale. And I'm just gonna move this to the end of my clip. So that's 100%. And I'm also going to zoom in to say 104. So it's just a little bit, but let's see what this does to our shot. See, it's a lot more dramatic now. Something you'll notice though, is we've got these mats on top of the clips, these black bars. And now because we've scaled this clip, those mats move. Well, you'll also notice that this mat is not the same as this mat, because there isn't one, as this mat. This mat's much bigger than this one. So we're gonna fix that at the end of the edit. Let's keep going. We've already used this shot. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Okay. All right, and now I want the espresso smash to come in. And now remember for this one, we reversed this clip if I remember correctly. Yeah, so that little yellow icon says that there's something going on in there. And I remember that if we go to speed duration, this clip has already been reversed. So it looks like we're smashing the espresso, not pulling the smasher out. So I'm gonna actually just alt click and drag this entire clip up into this sequence. And see all that did is created a copy of that clip in my coffee shop sequence. Okay. And you'll see that these clips are super fast. We're not leaning on them very long. Now let's keep playing this back. I think it's time for some milk. What do you think? To me, it makes more sense that we're gonna see the milk steamed before we see it swished around. I don't really know how baristas do their thing, but to me, that's what I wanna do. So let's grab this and we'll just throw that up into our source panel. And again, this shot is very static. There's a little bit of a move, and that's what I'm gonna try to gather right there. I think it starts right about there. So I'll hit my endpoint, come back into my edit, mark an in and out, and overwrite my clip. Okay, that looks like a good spot to come out. Let's just feel it. Yeah. And we're gonna sell this a little bit more in a second. Okay, so let's mark that one as used. We'll come over here. I wanna get me some milk storage. I think that move really picks up there. I want this swish to be coming around as we go into the clip. So I'm gonna put my endpoint right about there and drop it into the sequence.
Okay, so what happened there is exactly what I've been talking about. We did the edit directly on the beat and it feels a little late. So I'm actually gonna move this over, let's say two. That feels pretty good. I think I think that's gonna work. But we wanna pull this out. That little noise, I don't know what to call that, cool part of the song, whatever you wanna call it. Um, that uh, kinda indicates something else needs to happen. Okay. And so what's next? We've gotta get that coffee out of the espresso machine. This might be my favorite shot of that. But I like this overhead shot too. And something that we've got to combat here. So I really like that this shot uh, kind of tracks down the coffee and the smoke. But you'll notice it's only got one of these little spigots. Both of these shots have two spigots coming out. So we're gonna get a little creative to try and hide that. So let's start with this shot. And we wanna see that coffee roll over the edge of this metal. So I'm match frame into that, hit I, and then drop it into my sequence. Let's listen to this. Okay. Again, I think we're a little late, so I'm gonna nudge this over. All right, I wanna see a little bit more I feel like we're late on the coffee rolling over the edge of this, so I'm gonna select this and slip it one or two frames. There we go. All right, and then I think we're gonna come in with a new clip right here. And I like just this roll coming off of that. So let's match frame into that and add it to our sequence. We'll drag this out a little bit. And I think we're a hair early on that. So let's move this over, maybe one frame. And something that you'll notice that I'm doing, I'm not starting right on the clip that I'm looking at. I wanna start a few clips before so that I get used to the pacing in my head as I'm watching it as I'm watching the edit. Okay, this I think we can pull out a little further. Actually, no. That, that heavy beat right there is where we need to pull something in. So I'll move it back one frame, come here, we'll Turn that off. And let's find right here. Okay. I'm just gonna drag this whole clip up here. Again, just alt drag. And I think I'm gonna let this clip just play out until we get right here. Again, back it up some. I think we're a little slow somewhere. Let's watch it again. Yeah, I'm hearing that beat before I'm seeing the video change. So I'm gonna pull this back and then push this forward one frame. Yeah, okay, that's feeling really nice. Now we need our hero shot. So that one's pretty good but I really like how this shot has just some drama to it. The shadows around it just look really nice. I really enjoy it. And I think I want the shot to last. So you can see the barista's building this pretty design up in the corner, but there's a couple of pores and I really want some smooth action that's just gonna continue and drag us through the end of the clip. So that right there is what I want. I want this pour right here. So I'm gonna select, put this in my source monitor and mark an endpoint. And come here and drop it in. That feels pretty good. Let's see if we slip it a little bit. 
until that milk just touches. That's nice. I think I like that. I like how the milk kind of kisses the coffee right as that beat comes in. Perfect. All right, let's watch this whole thing through. I'm going to hit save because we did a lot of work right there. All right, jump to the head and let's go. Okay, so I noticed two things that we need to do to help kind of clean this up a little bit. The first is that this shot, remember, we've only got one spigot that we're working with here, but we have two right here. And we're trying to kind of cheat that, make it look as if there's two. So I'm gonna push into this shot. So let's select it, run up to our effect controls, and then hit scale. And I'm gonna click on that and pump it up like 25%, so 125. All right, and then let's move this over the entire frame. So it's not much, but it just really helps sell that coffee. And a side effect is we see all of this smoke. That's kind of nice. That smoke looks really cool. And you see more of it, I feel like, now that we've pushed into it. And 25%, yes, we're working in an HD sequence, but you really can't tell that much degradation in the quality of the footage at only 25%. So don't be afraid to scale up your footage when you need to. All right, very good. The other thing that I saw was this shot. We've got a cool little rack focus, but it's a little stale. And what I like about the next shot is we have that pull out that we added. So I'm actually gonna push into this shot. So let's select it and hit, come to the head of the clip, hit scale, and let's zoom in like 4%. See how that feels. Now let's get a little tricky with this. I wanna give it a bit of a camera rotation too. So I'm gonna hit rotation and I want it to rotate to the left. So I'm gonna hit negative two. That looks like a bit much, maybe negative one. Just something real subtle, and then I'll drag that to the end so that my motion, my scale, and my rotation are happening at the exact same rate. It's really subtle, but I think it helps. Okay. All right, let's watch it one more time. I think we've got a good edit on our hands. The only thing that's bothering me right now is I feel like this last little beat at the end of the song, I can still barely hear as the music plays. So I'm just gonna extend our fade a little bit. So that hum just kind of drowns out. All right, the last thing that we're gonna do to finish this off is we need to add a mat around all of our clips so that this black area looks the same. So to do that, I have a set of mats that I use from time to time when I have occasions like this. So I'm gonna go and grab one of those. This should be a good one. And pull it into my sequence. I'll be sure to share this in the description below as well. If we drag it into our sequence and put it on video layer two and drag this all the way out, you'll see we have a new mat on top of everything that is exactly the same.
But if you look right there, our first shot is a little bit bigger than what this mat allows for. So to fix that, I'm just gonna scale up this shot a little bit. Let's say 5%. I think that's good. All right, let's watch this through one last time. All right, guys, I feel pretty good about that. We've still got a little bit of work to do, but I hope you're happy with where we're at right now. If you're not, please feel free to create your own version of this. Do something that you really, really like. What we're gonna do in the next part of this series is grab some sound effects and add them into our video to really sell these visuals of coffee making that we see on the screen. So please, once again, make sure you download the mat in the description below and the current project, and we'll see you next time.